So that's how we describe this, the uh, shape. So now let's focus on describing the center. So there are two ways we're going to really think about describing the center, and that's the mean and the median. So I'm sure you've learned about, or I'm, I'm guessing you've probably learned about the mean and the median. Um, so the mean represents the sum of all the data values divided by the total number of data values. Um, and we can see it represented here as x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus dot 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 x sub n. So, you know, the first value plus the second value all the way up to the nth value divided by the total number that there are. And we can, we can write that more compactly using this notation over here um, where this fancy looking e is a sigma and it stands for sum. So basically what it's saying is if you sum up all of the x sub i's, you add them all up, and then you divide by n, you get the mean. So it's just a compact notation for this. So the mean is also referred to as the average. And you can also think of it as a balancing point. And by that I mean, imagine you have a paper airplane. Okay, you've got this paper airplane here. And you put it on your fingertip. Okay. The place where that paper airplane is going to perfectly balance, where it's not going to lean forward and it's not going to lean backwards, that's the mean. So it's sort of like the center of the gravity of the uh, distribution <clears throat> of our quantitative variable. So that's maybe if that helps you to sort of think about it. So it's like it's where the balance is. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's dividing the data in half because that's what the median does, but instead it's sort of where is the data sort of balanced. Now we represent the mean in the sample using this x bar notation, and then we represent the mean in the population using mu. And remember, x bar is an estimate of mu, okay? x bar can vary from sample to sample, right? We talked about this last class. If you take, a, if you have a sample and you have one sample and then you collect a second sample, there's no reason to think the means of those two will be the same. They could be, but they don't have to be. It's just by chance maybe that they're the same. Um, they may, they will probably be close to one another if you've taken a nice random sample, but they shouldn't be identical because there's variability. And that's what statistics is about. Okay. So the other statistic is the median. And so the median, which we represent as this italicized M, splits the data in half. So how do we calculate the median? If there are an odd number of data values, the median is literally just the middle number. And if there are an even number of data values, the median is the average of the middle two numbers. So let's calculate these things. <clears throat> so we have the following set of numbers, 8, 12, 3, 18, and 15. Let's find the mean and the median. So let's find the median first. So what is the median? So the thing we want to do first to calculate the median is we want to put these in ascending or descending order. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to write 3, 8, 12, 15, 18. So do I have odd numbers or even numbers? Well, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have five values, so I have odd number. So we know that the median is the middle number. So in this case, the median is 12. So m equals 12. Now, what is the mean? What is the mean? So this is the median, this is the mean, this is the median. So to find the mean, I said we need to sum all these up and divide by the total number of things there are. So it should be 3 plus 8 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18. And there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 things. And if we add that up together and, and we take the average, I mean, add it up and divide by uh, divide by five. We're going to get the mean of eleven point two. So we see that the mean is slightly below the median. Okay, but they're very close to one another. Now, what would have happened if we just had the numbers three, eight, twelve, uh, three, eight, fifteen, and eighteen? What do we do to calculate the median then? In that situation, because we have four numbers, and we're in the situation where we have an even number, we take the average of 8 and 15. So 
that would be 8 plus 15 over 2 and that's going to be 11 and a half so in that situation our median would be 11 and a half so one more thing to think about is what happens if instead of having the number 15 right instead what if we had the number 100 oops let me use these numbers down here 3 18 12 118 okay does the median change no the median is still just 12 but does the mean change well let's calculate it 8 plus 3 plus 8 plus 12 plus 100 plus 18 over 5 well that is now going to equal let me see I just got it up here on my computer 28 oops 28.2 so in that situation the mean is now 28.2 but the median stayed to, at 12 so this is a really really important uh, thing to keep in mind the mean is really impacted by outliers by extreme values the median is not now we refer to this as resistance so a statistic is resistant if it is relatively unaffected by extreme values in this case outliers so outliers and skew and I, I want to mention both of those and skew will pull the mean away from the center towards the tail and the median will not be affected so the median is not affected by uh, by outliers we just saw before if instead of having the value of 15 we had the value of 100 the median doesn't change so the median is resistant the mean is not this is a very important concept in statistics now let's look again down here at executive orders I've drawn two lines here a black line and a red line so this is the black line is the first one and then this one right here is the red line <clears throat> which one of these lines do you think is the mean which one do you think is the median so the thing we want to consider right now is is the data skewed and the answer is yes the data is skewed if you remember we drew a line over this before and it's skewed to the right this is going to help us figure out uh, which one is the larger value now you notice we have some really large values to the right there so what that's doing is it's tugging the mean to the right. It's tugging it away from the median. So it's tugging it up. And so because of that, this value right here is the mean. And we know that's the mean because of the skew. And then this one right here will be the median. Okay? So the mean will be greater than the median when you have right skew. Now let's look at the case where we had left skew. Okay. Now in this situation, our data, we again have a, a black line and we have a red line. If we want to draw a shape over it, we would go like this. And I said that this data was left skewed, right? So let's think about that then. So if it's left skewed, we should observe the exact opposite situation which is that this line now should be the mean and this line should be the median. And that's exactly what that is. So when our data are left skewed, the mean will be less than the median. Oops. Okay. This final slide is from your, your textbook, and um, it just shows what I just showed you before. So when the, the, the data is skewed to the left, the mean will be less than the median. When the data is skewed to the right, the mean will be greater than the median. And when the distribution is perfectly symmetric, oops, the mean and the median will be the same, okay? So I hope that this makes sense to you, and I hope that at the end of this lecture, you now understand how to describe the shape and what we're looking for when we're looking at the shape.
right? So when we plot quantitative variable, we're interested in looking at for three things. Is there symmetry? Is there skew? And are there outliers? I hope you now know that something can't be symmetric and skewed, that it can only be symmetric or skewed. And then what we want to be able to do by the end of this lecture is describe and be able to calculate uh, measures of center. So the mean and the median. And we should know that the mean is not a resistance statistic because it's affected by outliers, while the median is a resistance statistic because it is not.